Think about that for a minute. Do you really know who Jesus is? He is Lord of all. He is Lord of all that we do. He is Lord of all that we are. He is Lord of all that we were. Yes. Have you given all of your past to Him? Well, see, that's that's something that's something a little different. <laughs> we don't we don't like to talk about our past, but we remember our past and where we came from, right? Remember where we came from, so we don't go back, right? How many know Jesus brought you out of something you don't want to go back to? I, I, I know that for a fact for me. But today is Palm Sunday. Kindly, I have a video from YouTube. Get ready to play that. See, but today is the, today is is Palm Sunday. And as she gets this video ready to play, it's on YouTube. It's it's about a woman that, that, that that's texting. And, and, and as, as she gets ready to do this, I, I, I want you to think about this. This is Palm Sunday. And see if you can see this, uh, see this, the Palm Sunday, and this, what, the, what happens to this lady. You're watching America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Get ready to feel a little guilty for laughing on this one. But here's our latest and greatest evidence that no one should attempt to walk and text at the same time. Now, this girl right here, she's walking, she's texting, and goes whoop, straight into the fountain. Oh, it all went down recently at a mall in Pennsylvania. The best part might just be her reaction. Just get up and walk away and hope no one saw it. No worry, no worry, no one did see it except thankfully for the surveillance cameras. And there's an iPhone out there that does let you see in front of you through your camera as you text. So if you really gotta walk and text, try, try that out. We've all had some this half happen while texting out. Is this true? Okay? So, do you see Palm Sunday in that? I see now all y'all confused. Now y'all wondering what in the world we're talking about. Y'all just confused. You, how do you how do you see Palm Sunday in a woman walking, what texting while walking, falling into a, a, a water fountain? Have you done something like that? No, you've not. You've not. You, you've not been doing something else. Then let's forget texting. Let's just say you're, you're you're walking around the house. You're walking out in the public, and and you're reading something, or 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 you you, you know you, you're distracted by something, and you run into a wall, or you run into a signpost, or huh? Are we sure we haven't done something like that? How many have done something like that? I'm not talking texting now. This is what happens. We get distracted. And, and while we laugh at this, I saw other videos where this lady was actually very upset because uh, she, she was actually pointing the finger at the security camera or the security team for releasing that. Okay? Never mind the fact that she should have been watching where she was going. It's their fault because they released the video. Right? How, how many have ever fallen out in public and got up? And what's the first thing you do when you get up? You look around to see if anybody saw you do it, right? That's what happens. We all get distracted. And we all, we all miss this. We all miss stuff. Are you beginning to understand maybe where we're coming from with Palm Sunday? See, today is Palm Sunday. This is the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And we're going to look at this and we're going to see that there was a whole crowd of people around Jesus and we're going to look at what they were doing. We're going to look at what they were concentrating on and we're going to look at what the, the, their actions they did. We're going, to, we're going to look at this a little in depth and hopefully we're going to look at this a, a little differently than where maybe you've, not, you, maybe you've not realized it, maybe you have realized it and forgot about it. So turn with me, if you would. I, I do have it up on, I will have it up on the PowerPoint. <clears throat> But turn with me, if you will, to the book of Luke, chapter 19. Okay? Luke 19. And we're going to be looking at the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And that is found in verses 28 to 44. Okay? Everybody there? Everybody ready? All right. So we're going, to look, we're going to break this down into three different parts this morning, okay? The first part goes from 28 to 34, and this is what the Word of the Lord tells us today. When he had seen these things, he went on ahead. Or when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two, two of the disciples... And said, go into the village ahead of you, 
As you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, on which one has never ever, has has on which one has n never sat ever sat anyway. No one has ever sat. I see that was but in my view, it's, it's kind of blocked. But anyway, uh, untie it and bring it. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say this: the Lord needs it. And so those who were sent left and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, the owner said to them, said to them, "Why are you untying the colt? The Lord needs it." They said. So this is our first section right here. This this strike you as odd. Does anything in that strike you as odd? Put yourself in the disciples' place right now. Think about this. Jesus looks at you and it says, "Okay, go out, go on ahead of us, and look in, and, and you're going to find a colt with its mama." Go ahead and untie that thing and bring it here. If they say anything to you, say the Lord needs it. Do you find this odd? Honestly, you've probably read this a hundred times, right? Maybe a thousand times. Huh? Do, do you find this as odd? I mean, really seriously, hard to really think about this in your human mind. Is this odd? It is odd. Now, let me ask this other question. If you were there, and Jesus looks at you, and says, go get somebody else's colt and bring to me, wouldn't you throw your hand up and say something? Yeah, I'd say, why? you say, why? You're, you're, you're with the disciples, you're part of the disciples, so, and you've heard Jesus teaching, and you know Jesus teaches from the Ten Commandments, would anybody throw up their hand and say, Jesus, isn't that stealing? Doesn't the Ten Commandments speak against that? Well, honestly, how many would, how many questions? Let's just be honest. If he did this today and said, go out there and get Brother Terry's Corvette, and, and, and if he says anything, just says the Lord needs it. How many would question? I know Brother Terry would. I mean, think about it. Is there not a commandment in the Old Testament that says, thou shalt not... Steal, right? And yet Jesus is saying, go get somebody else's cult and bring him. It, I mean, that, that strikes me as odd. That strikes me as odd. And I, in, in my flesh, I'll be like, Jesus, wait a minute. I, I'm uncomfortable with this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, really, I, that, that, would be my, that would be my reaction. But yet the disciples did it, and it happened just as Jesus said. Do you think it crossed their minds that it was a fulfillment of Scripture? A fulfillment of prophecy? Do you think it crossed their mind that way? I mean, we're not told their reaction, and this is where we get to play around with it a little bit and think, you know, what was the conversation between the disciples as they were going to get this call, get this young donkey? What, 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 what was their conversation? I, I mean, yeah, really. I mean, if, you know, the, the Old Testament says if you steal something, we're going to have to replace it seven times more. I mean, that's what, that's what the Old Testament says. And that's what they were living under was the Old Testament law. But Jesus had a purpose. And God had prepared the way. And we need to understand that God works in unexpected ways. God does things unexpectedly through us, for us, by us. And we just need to be willing to go and do what He says, right? Right? This is the thing that we need to understand first and foremost is the disciples didn't question like we would. The disciples didn't question this. They went and they did exactly what Jesus said. And the crazy thing is, it happened exactly the way Jesus said it would. That was not their that, that, that wasn't their motive. That wasn't their uh, that, that wasn't the way they would have done it, right? But Jesus said, do this and watch what happens. There was, I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the baffling things about the triumphant, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem for Jesus. He sends the disciples to get this young colt. 
of a donkey. Untie it and bring it to me. They had no idea. We're not told that they had any inkling of an idea that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. How many know where that comes from? We talked about it just Wednesday. Where does it come from, Sister Terry? Zechariah 9, 9. 9. This is what it says. Rejoice, O people of Jerusalem. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. I'm sorry. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O, o people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Now, <clears throat> you would think, I mean, the Lord already had this worked out, right? How many years before this, before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, was this written? Over 500 years. See, Jesus had no control over that person that he uh, that owned that colt and that donkey. He had no control over that. They could have said, no, you're not taking that. No. If you want it, you're going to have to buy it. He could have, that, that, that could have been what happened. In today's society, that's what would have happened, right? You know, I, I got to make a profit on this thing somehow. Now, we won't, we won't stay there, don't worry. But in today's society, this would not, this was written 500 years prior to Jesus getting the cult and riding into Jerusalem. 500 years. That's not like it was written last week. We're saying five. Hundred years. That's crazy. But through the prophet Zechariah, the Lord foretold what was going to happen. Zechariah was used mightily by the Spirit of God to write this prophecy down. You had to put yourself in Zechariah's shoes. You want me to write what? What's the message? Who is this for? I'm confused. Right? Zechariah writes it, goes all through his life. I don't know how old he was when he wrote it, but he goes through the rest of his life thinking, this prophecy was written down for what? I have yet to see it. I have yet to see it. Zechariah died not, know, not seeing that prophecy come to fulfillment. But yet, it was meant for a certain time. The Lord works in ways that we don't understand it all, day, all, all the time. As a matter of fact, most of the time, if the Lord is at work in your life, if the Lord is at work doing something for you, to you, through you, you're not going to understand what He's doing. Honestly, you're not. Because the Bible tells us, the Scripture tells us, the prophet Jeremiah tells us, your ways are higher than my ways, your thoughts higher than my thoughts. So, does that tell you that we're not going to understand what God is doing? All the time. Right? And so, you know, we, we've talked about this box, and we've talked about this box that we like to put God in. You know, we like to put Him inside, let's just say that we put Him inside this little water bottle. Okay, God, this is how you're going to work. This is how you're going to do it. This right here, this represents how you're going to work, what you're going to do, and how you're going to do it, and how I expect you to do it. All the while, he wants to work outside of that container, outside of that box. He wants to work outside of that and do things that will blow your mind. Has your mind been blown by God lately? Has your mind been blown by God lately? I mean, think about that. Do you, do you really want God to do the unexpected? Because that's how he wants to work. He wants to work in unexpected ways. Search out the Scriptures. Search out the Old Testament. Search out the New Testament. And see what God does. God always did things that, that struck people as, as out of the ordinary. I mean, only God can make an axe head float, right? Only God could cause water to come out of a rock, right? Only God could raise uh, could 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 raise a, a dead man by the prophet but through the prophet Elijah's bones, right? Only God could bring Jesus back to life, right? See, he wants to work in the unexpected ways, and we have to give him that lateral. We have to give him that room to work in unexpected 
ways. We have to allow Him to do that. We have to. That's what happened here. Think about if the disciples would have bucked up and said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. What would have happened? The triumphal entry never would have, it never would have taken place. We wouldn't be talking about it today had it taken place. Or had they, had they bucked up on Jesus. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't miss it. Come on, say it to him. Don't miss it. See, Jesus had a mission. How many know Jesus had a mission? And how many know that mission was understood on this day, on Palm Sunday? Nobody got it. Everyone missed it. And we're going to look at that right now. Let's look in Luke chapter 19, verses 35 to 39. And let's, let's see what it says. Then they brought it to Jesus, talking about the cold of the, don the, 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 cold of the donkey. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their clothes on the colt, they helped Jesus get on it. As he was going along, they were spreading their clothes on the road. Now he came near the path down the Mount of Olives. And the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Do you see where they're missing it? Can you see where they're missing it? No? Okay, well, with them, I'm glad you asked. How are they missing it? I'm glad you asked. Oh, let me go on. I'm sorry. Some of the Pharisees from... I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the slide. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Are you seeing how they're missing it? Well, let me, I'm glad you're asking. I'm glad you're asking how they're missing it because they're missing it. They're missing it completely. Everybody except Jesus is missing it completely. See, what's going on here is, is there, there, there are two different trains of thought that are happening in this crowd. Two different trains of thought that are going on here. First of all, the disciples, the crowd of disciples, were expecting Jesus to come in as a, as a victorious warrior. They're expecting Him to rescue them from the enslavement from the Romans. That, that's what they're expecting. They're missing it. Even though they're saying this that is found in Psalm 118, 26, Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Even though they're saying that, they're praising Him as He's walking, as He's riding on this colt, going into Jerusalem, although, they, although they're praising Him, they're missing it. They're expecting Him to rescue them from their Roman captors right now. Then, the disciples were looking at the present and the tangible. They were looking at the present circumstance in front of them. They were not seeing this as an eternal thing. They were seeing this as rescue us now. Take care of our enemies now. They realized that Jesus was different. They understood that Jesus was different. They all called him a good teacher. Right? They all said he was a good teacher. But they were missing the complete picture of what Jesus was doing. See, they thought that, they, 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 they thought that, that even, even though Jesus had told them time and time and time again that he was going to be crucified, they were looking for him to rescue them right now. Jesus told them at least three times bluntly, I am going to be crucified. Remember? Gee, the, who was it that rebuked him? Peter. You, 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 don't say that. You're not going to be. That's not true. And what did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. How many would love to see how that, that goes back to the, 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 you know, the things about Jesus? That everybody says they'd love to have Jesus as their pastor. Well, I don't think you would because you know Jesus looks at you and says, get behind me, Satan. You're going to take offense to that and you're going to walk away, right? Let's just be honest. 
If, 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 if I walk up to Brother Benny and say, get behind me, Satan, I'm not really going to have a good friendship with Brother, ben, with Brother Benny, am I? They missed it. They, even though Jesus told them time after time after time, He came to die. They missed it. Even in this last week, they missed it. They failed to realize that the kingdom that Jesus was referring to was in the future. They failed to realize what was going on. That's the first train of thinking that we have here. The second train of thinking is from those good old boys, the Pharisees. The good old boys. Right? The good old boy club. Well, that's anyway. <laughs> they were jealous and fearful of Jesus. They were jealous and fearful of Him. They didn't want that praise going to Jesus. They didn't want what they were proclaiming to go to Jesus. They didn't want those palm branches laying down before Him. They didn't want that clothing put down before Him. I'll get to that in a minute. They were fearful and they were jealous. I mean, they didn't keep it a secret. But look at this. Check this out. This is later on. This is when Jesus is standing trial and he's before Pilate now. In Matthew 27, 15 through 18, this is a little bit later. He said, At the festival, the governor the, what, the at the festival, the governor's custom was to release to the crowd a prisoner they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who is it you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ? For he knew, check it out, <clears throat> for he knew it was because of their envy that they had handed him over. Pilate knew Pilate knew they were jealous of Jesus. So they were fearful of Jesus that he would come and he would do what, they, do what the crowd was saying and take their power away, take their influence away. And they were jealous of the praise that was going to him because they had been getting all of that attention, not Jesus. Do you see it now? They missed it completely. Completely they missed it. See, in the text that we're using today, they talk about how the people laid their clothes down. In John chapter 12, verse 13, he describes it as them putting palm branches down as well. What is the significance of the palm branches and the clothing being laid down? Royalty? Okay. But it's not just that. It goes a little deeper than that. Then he was a king. It, it, it still, it still gave you the, the, the both of those are correct. But let's look at that a little bit more. See the significance of the palm branches of the clothing that they were laying down. That is the, the first off. Let's let's look at the palm branches because this is Palm Sunday. This is why we call this Sunday Palm Sunday, right? It's the Saturday before. Jesus rose from the grave, or the, the Sunday before Jesus rose from the grave, and we call it Palm Sunday. This is, this is the significance of the palm branches. The palm branches were often used in celebration of victory, and in King David's time, they were used to honor royalty. So if they had, it, it, say, say they had a visiting king come in, what they would do is they would use the palm branches to signify and welcome that king into their camp during King David's time. The fact of this history of the palm branches makes a perfect connection to the identity of who Jesus was. And Jesus is, I'm sorry, not was, He still is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, right? That's the significance of the palm branches. That's how it ties into Jesus. But it goes a little bit further than that. And you're, this is going to blow you away because it did me. 
You ready? A palm, a palm tree, after it's planted, takes 30 years to be, to, until it begins to bear fruit. In Israel's custom, you had to be 30 years old before you could become a high priest. Yeah, see, y'all starting to get it now. Now y'all starting to get the significance here. How old was Jesus when he started his ministry? 30 years old. <laughs> the palm branches bring a whole new light. You're thinking of them in a whole different light now, aren't you? See, the ministry that Jesus began, He began when He was 30 years old. So this is significant because they are saying He is the King. He is the High Priest. He is the one who is worthy to receive these palm branches that we're welcoming Him, welcoming him with. So let's look at the clothing now. The second thing, again, the clothing. The clo them laying the clothing down was more than just an act of honor. This was also an acknowledgement and a declaration that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. See, the word, again, we'll get ready. It's going to blow your mind, okay? The word garment here that's used in the original is the word talit. T-A-L-L-I-T. Talit. Does anybody know what the talit is? The prayer shawl. <sighs> okay? So they were taking their prayer shawls and laying them down before him. But, but hold on. Hold on. It gets even better. It gets even better. Because at the, uh, at the collar of the prayer shawl, there are letters written in Hebrew. Okay? And, and those letters spell out Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So as they were taking their talents down and laying them at the, uh, on the road and laying them on the, on the donkey's back so Jesus could sit, they were saying, you are the King of Kings. You are the promised Messiah. You are the one we've been waiting for. So now you begin to understand why the Pharisees were so angry. Because they were professing that He is the King of Kings, He is the Lord of Lords, and He is the Messiah, and they were laying their will down before Him. They were laying it down saying, yes, even so, come Lord Jesus. They still missed it though. They missed it. I mean, this is a, now, now are, you starting to be, are you starting to understand? Are you starting to see the, the full picture of this? The palm branches... The prayer shawls being laid down before Jesus. They're laying down what they think they're waiting for before Him because they are acknowledging, whether they realize it or not, they are acknowledging that yes, He is the King of Kings. Yes, He is the Lord of Lords. I mean, it's an amazing picture when you look at it, but still, everyone missed it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. See, this is, this is something we need to understand. Even in our everyday life, we miss it. See, in Luke 19, 41 to 44, the word of the Lord says, As he approached and saw the city, he wept for it, saying, If you knew this day what would bring peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days will come on you when your enemies will build a barricade around you, surround you, and hem you in on every side. They will crush you and your children among you to the ground. And they will not leave one stone on another in your midst because you did not recognize the time when God visited you. You 
did not recognize when God visited you. You know, there's a character in the Old Testament gets a lot of shade from us. There's a man in the Old Testament that we like to we like to throw under the bus a lot because he did a lot of bad stuff. He did a lot of stuff wrong. Broke God's heart many times. When they came upon him, the scripture says he didn't even realize the power of God was no longer on him. Anybody remember who that is? Anybody remember? He woke up, roused himself just like he always did, but he missed it. Samson. Some of the hardest words to read and to hear in Scripture is right here. You did not recognize the time when God visited you. It broke Jesus' heart. He cried. He wept over the city of Jerusalem because they missed it. In the midst of all of everything that was going on, the praising and the questioning, he looks at Jerusalem and begins to weep for Jerusalem because they all missed it. See, Jesus sees Jerusalem. He loves Jerusalem. I don't know what it is about Jerusalem, but He loves Jerusalem. That is the only city that we are actually commanded to pray for the peace for. Yes, we are to pray for our, we're, we're to pray for our leaders, we're to pray for our, our country and all that, but He specifically said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He loves Jerusalem. And sorrow begins to fill him. That righteous indignation begins to come on him because he knows what lies ahead of him. And he sees Jerusalem and he begins to weep over Jerusalem. He is mourning the fact that the entire city, not just the city, but the entire nation of Israel missed his coming. Because they missed it, Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew the pain that He was going to suffer. He knew the humiliation that He was going to go through. He knew the taunting that was going to happen. And it would come from the Romans and the people He came for. His nation. See, their misconception brought them to, caught their misconception of what Jesus was doing and, and what they thought he would do caused them to miss the whole thing. You have the one group that believed Jesus was going to save them, rescue them with military might. That was their conception. While the others, they, 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 they refused to believe that He was the Messiah because of the things that He was doing. Because that He was rocking the boat. He was throwing over that, to, that, that apple cart. They missed it because of their conception. See, but let's look at our lives now. How often do we miss it? How often do we miss it? We wake up in the morning. Who woke us up? It had to be the Lord. The Lord woke us up in the morning, gave us breath to go out on to go on about our day. Do we acknowledge Him then? What about when we go out and when we step outside and, and we see the beauty of the mountains and we see, we see the birds in the air now and we begin to see things flip, uh, beginning to bloom and, and all the beauty that comes in spring. How often do we say, you created that, Lord. Thank you. What about when we come into our church services and God meets us in our church services but we, we, we leave out and we feel like we, we, we didn't see Him at all. He's knocking at the door. 
He's knocking at the door of our hearts today. And we miss Him. We miss Him. See, I know we look at this picture and we shake our heads and we wonder, how in the world could they miss it? Well, how in the world could we miss it? See, there's a picture further on in Scripture that gives us exactly what Jesus thinks about us and what He's doing. Hopefully this doesn't fit you, but I, I, I'll be honest. I have been falling into this and I've had to go back. And, and there's two Scriptures I read to, to right now. Every day I try my best to read these two Scriptures because it's my sincere cry. Because I've missed Him. I've missed Him. I read Psalm 51. And it's interesting. In Psalm 51, the psalmist David, that's the psalm that he wrote after he was, he, he was, he was with Bathsheba. After he was exposed with his sin with Bathsheba. I'm not saying I committed adultery, okay? Don't get that idea. But that prayer is my prayer right now. In that prayer, he says a common statement that I have misquoted for years. Many of you have as well. I've always said, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Right? How many have said that? I have. That's the way I've said it. But you know that's quoted wrong? Psalm 51 says, Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Not mine. I read that one. I try my best to read that one every day. And I read another one that's found in Revelation chapter 3. Or I'm sorry, chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember. Remember then how far you have fallen. Repent. And do the work you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Are you as passionate about the Lord today as when you first met Him? Your first love. I want that to sink in for a minute. Are you as passionate for Him as you were? What about this scripture? Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those of you who are victorious will sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. We like to get excited about that last part, right? Woo! That's me! I'm going to be sitting with Jesus! And we totally glass over the first part. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, I will open the door. Or, and, and, and no, if you hear my voice and we think, and I will open the door. Is that what it says? Is he going to be the one opening the door? Who has to open the door? We do. The first scripture that I read was the, the church of Ephesus. That's where that was written. That's the church it was written to, was the church of Ephesus. This is the church of Laodicea. I stand at the door and knock. This He is standing at the door of a church. Knocking on the door. Wanting us to let Him in. 
So often, we come in our services and He's knocking on the door. He is there with us, but we refuse to let Him in. We like to concentrate on verse 21. We've got to understand verse 20. He is talking to you and He is talking to me. With the church of Ephesus, He is talking to you and He is talking to me. Have we left our first love? Have we left our first love? That's a question only you can answer. I told you. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty transparent. I, I will honestly tell you, I've had to read these Scriptures and repent myself. And I've had to pray this prayer. Lord, restore to me the joy of Your salvation. Not my salvation because I can't do anything. I can't save myself. I can't get myself out of the bathtub. I mean, for, for heaven's sake, I can't do anything without You. I need Your salvation to come into my life again and to restore that joy that I've had before. It's hard. Many scriptures, they see, this is what I'm saying. We can't miss it. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this great time. Don't miss having the joy restored in your life again. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. See, I want you to, I want you to think about the Pharisees and notice the Pharisees, well, where were the Pharisees? Where were the Pharisees? In, in, the, in the text that we've read today, where were the Pharisees at? In the crowd, and who made that crowd up? The disciples. You see the correlation there? The Pharisees were in the crowd of the church members. Let's put it to church now. Let's put it, let's, let's connect all the dots right now. The Pharisees were in there among the rest of the church leaders, and they influenced the rest of the church that were praising him later on in the week, right? They went to church. They were there. They were among the disciples. Do you see the correlation? Sometimes we get so comfortable and we get so complacent as we come into church that we miss Him completely when we're here. We have, we have programmed everything out. Okay, we're going to sing these three songs. Uh, the, the, the preacher may, may or may not, he may pray before, but he'll, he'll get up there at some point in time and yell and scream and pray and do whatever he's going to do. And then we'll pray and then we'll go on home. We become so regimented, there's no room for God anymore. There's no room for Him anymore. We come in and we miss it. We come in and we miss it. They were the people in the crowd were experiencing prophecy being fulfilled before their very eyes and they missed it. Because it's possible to be close to religion and yet still miss God. Nineteen oh three. It's a very exciting time. 1903, it was here in North Carolina. 1903, a couple of guys by the name of Orville and Wilbur. Right? Orville and Wilbur? Right? Right? See, we went in there. Orville and Wilbur did something very exciting on the coast of North Carolina. They flew for the first time. God gave them the vision of flying. Crazy, right? How many were how many were alive back then? Orville and Wilbur were successful. They they took flight. They, they, it took them many 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 times to try, and they finally took flight. They got in their flying machine and they flew, I believe, 120 feet. 
if I'm not too badly mistaken. They flew 120 feet. And so they didn't have the internet. They didn't have phones. They didn't have a cell phone for sure. And so they sent a message back home to their sister. And they were thrilled over what happened. So they telegraphed their sister back home and said, and said, and her name was Catherine, and, and said to her, we have actually flown 120 feet, we'll be home for Christmas. Her, their sister Catherine was very excited. She took it to the paper and, and she showed it to the writer of the paper. He read over the message and he said, that's great, the boys will be home for Christmas. They totally missed the exciting part that man has flown. Are you missing it today? Are you missing it? We become complacent. We become ho-hum, as you say, with our salvation. We lose the awe and the majesty of what Jesus actually did for us. He had a mission, and we complete that mission. We were on His mind. He did what He did for all of us, but yet we lose the awe of what Jesus did. We lose the awe as we become distracted, as we become, as we become hurried in our life. A pastor, it's it, 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 that pastor better hurry up. It's already it, it, it's already eleven thirty. I, I got to get out of here. We got to get to the, we, we got to get there before the Baptist do. We got to hurry. We become distracted so much so in our everyday life, not just on Sundays when we get up and we and, we, and, and, and they call it the rat race. We get up on Monday mornings and we go out and we begin to complete the rat race. We compete in that rat race and we begin to some so become so hurried and so and and, and so so gotta, gotta, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, I got this to do, I got this to do, I got this to do. Where is God fitting in in all of that? Where is God fitting in? Throughout our day. Do we stop? Say, Lord, thank you. Do you begin your day that way? Do you look to Him throughout the day? Do you have a conversation with Him throughout the day? Or, or is it once a week? Maybe once a month? See, what happens is, as you begin to slip in talking to the Lord daily, if you don't do it daily, then it becomes into a once a, you know, two or three times a week thing. And then you slowly come into once a week. And then it slows down to once a month. And then maybe once every three months. And, and then maybe once every year. And, and then you begin to not talk to Him at all. Where are you at? Are you missing Him in your everyday life? Maybe your righteousness, your self-righteousness, Feelings, actions, your 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 own self righteousness has been traded for his righteousness. Isaiah says, My righteousness is the filthy rags when it comes to you. Are you missing Jesus just like the religious leaders? Because you're too concerned with where you where, where you sit at church. I've seen it. Fights have nearly broke out in church before because somebody took somebody else's seat. Maybe you're mad because the color carpet is not your color. I've seen... There, there's a story. I'm not talking about the Brady Bunch. There's a story. My wife reminded me of it. Church was so divided. They were remodeling the church and they were so divided over who was going to uh, over over the color of carpet? They were they, they were so divided. You know what they did? Keep everybody happy. One side of the church was blue. The other side of the church is red. That's I'm just making those colors up. But that's that's what they did. They had one side of the church one color. One side of the church the other color. Have 
we missed it because of our personal preferences? Have we missed it because of our politics? Have we? I mean, think about it. Think. I, I can't say for sure. Well, I know everybody's all up in arms right now over politics, but remember, we serve somebody who's greater than these pop than the politics that we have right now on this on this planet, anywhere in this planet, and that is God Almighty. He is the one we ultimately answer to. He is the one that we ultimately go to, and but we can't let that cause us to miss Jesus. Are we missing Him? Or, this is the final question I've got for you. What does your relationship with Jesus look like? Is it one where you're deeply pursuing Him every day? Where you realize you can't make it without Him? You can't breathe without Him? You can't do anything without Him. Or is it a relationship with Jesus in name only? Are you missing it? Don't miss it today. Kylie, you still back there? No, she's not. Okay. So, okay. Find me something to play. See, it's easy to get mad at the pastor for the for bringing this kind of message. This is Palm Sunday. We're supposed to be celebrating. Well, okay, we, we have celebrated, right? But we have to have the truth of the Word of God with that, right? And the truth of the Word of God is they missed it. On Palm Sunday, they missed it completely because four days later, they were crying out in the streets of Jerusalem, Crucify Him! The same people that praised Him were yelling, crucify Him four days later. They missed it. If you want, how many got the, how many got the, uh, uh, the, the synoptic gospel of, uh, of what happened during the last week of Jesus? The four gospels. The paper of the four gospels from, when, from Wednesday. I encourage you to read that. Read it as it happened. And understand, the same people that were praising Him and saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord who comes in and they were praising Him. Those same people were shouting, Crucify Him four days later. They were influenced by the Pharisees who wanted Jesus dead. In your readings, I hope you find out that Jesus was not the only one they wanted to kill. He became their main focus. They wanted to kill Lazarus as well. Lazarus had been raised from the dead a short time before Jesus entered into Jerusalem. Lazarus raised from the dead. They wanted him dead because he was a living testimony of what Jesus did. He was a living testimony. They could not deny that Lazarus was dead because they all knew it. He was dead for four days. When he showed, when Jesus showed up on the scene four, after four days, He said, "Remove the t- roll the stone away. Move the stone. I said, Jesus, come on man, He's going to be stinking. He's been dead four days. And He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus comes hopping out in the grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him. There was no one that could deny what happened to Lazarus. No one. They wanted that man dead. Understand, we must put away our preconceived ideas of what God's going to do. We have to put away the, 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 the misconceptions that we have about who God is. Because let's be real. We all think, okay, God has worked this way before, so He'll do it that way again, right? But God's standing there saying, oh, I want to do something totally different. I want to blow your mind. I don't have the answers of why, why God moves the way He does. But I'm here to tell you right now, Don't miss it. I have read a couple of articles this weekend 
Because you all know I'm a Steelers fan. The Steelers had a tragedy happen. Don't know why. Don't know why he was doing this. Dwayne Haskins, they're one of their backup quarterbacks, 24 years old, played high school football. Or, I'm sorry, college football for Ohio State. He's a star the last year he was there. 24 years old, was going to turn 25 in May. Don't know why he was doing this. No, they're, they're still under investigation. Nobody has any answers for this. Walked out onto Interstate 595 in, I think it's Jacksonville. Struck and hit by a dump truck. Pronounced dead on the scene. Read another article. And you may have heard of that. I, I saw Jeff back there shaking his head, and I know he'd heard it. He'd heard that. Read another article. A young lady in Pakistan was killed by three other women. You know why? Because a 13-year-old girl had a dream that the woman that was killed was blaspheming Allah. Three women slit her throat. And the authorities found her lying in her own pool of blood. Sharp objects, objects around. I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't want to lighten or, or, or to or, or to get you down, but I want you to understand. You don't know the day that woman that was killed was only twenty-one. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't want anybody in this place or watching my way of Facebook to miss it. Don't miss Jesus. Don't miss Him. I have been missing Him. I have become so in, in, engulfed with the things that I've been going through that I have missed Him. I've had to repent and I'm still having to repent and I'm still having to say, Lord, restore to me the joy of Your salvation, not my salvation, because I'm not going to be able to go anywhere without You. Restore to me the joy of Your salvation. Don't miss Him today. Are you anywhere close to any of this? I don't want anyone to miss it. Because Jesus said, if you don't repent, I will take your lampstand out of my presence. He was speaking to the lukewarm church. And see, that's what happens. When we become complacent, when we can, when we become when we become ho hum about our salvation, we begin to miss him, and he misses us. Not because his aim is off, but he misses our time with him. That's what he's missing. Don't miss Jesus today, Father, in Jesus' name. I have delivered what you laid on my heart for this day. I have said what you wanted me to say. Yes, we like to concentrate on the praising and the joyous celebration that was taking place. But we really, today, took a hard look at it and realized that everybody in the crowd missed who Jesus was. And what Jesus was here for. And what Jesus was going to accomplish. Lord, we can look back at that now with the critical eye. But had we been there, I believe we would have been much the same way. We would have missed Him. We would have been thankful for the food that He gave us. We would have been thankful for the miracles that He performed. But I fear that we would have missed Him just like they did. Because we got distracted by the things that He did. By His hand. 
as we missed his purpose. So, Father, today, I don't want anybody in this place, and with the sound of my voice, here or on Facebook, to miss Jesus today. Don't miss him. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Facebook, if this is you, you can type in the comments. We'll, we'll answer you as quickly as we can. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many would be willing to say today that you've missed Jesus? You've missed Him. Whether once, thank you. Whether once, twice, maybe you haven't talked to Him all week long. How many would be willing to admit to, to be, nobody's looking around, I'm the only one looking. How many would be willing to say, yeah, you know, I missed Him a couple of times. Thank you, thank you. Um, missed him. I haven't talked to him all week. I, 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 I totally missed him. I got so busy. I'm telling you, Jesus wants you in his presence every day. So here's what we're going to do. This is not a, a laying hands on, uh, on on you type of service. This is this is this is not what this is. Maybe you didn't raise your hand. I, I, I know there are several that already raised their hand. Maybe you didn't raise your hand. But yeah, I'm going to give you the opportunity. If this message spoke to you, if if what God is speaking to us spoke to you, then I want you to come find a place to pray. Because I'm going to join you. Because I missed it. If you're waiting on an altar call, that's it. Because the next thing you're going to see me do is I'm coming down off this platform and I'm finding my own place. Because I missed it. I don't want to miss you. 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 I
分体之一。他们是，所以我是，所以我是。Your glories. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for being so patient, showing your mercy, showing your grace to us. Not just showing us, but chase us down with your grace and your mercy. Understand your kind of love, but I'm thankful. While the Spirit is here, He's so, so sweet up here, and it's so wonderful. Is there anyone that needs special prayer today? You've got an infirmament in your body, dealing with pain. You've got, you want to stand in for somebody. Is that you today? Will you come? We want to pray with you. We want to agree with you. We want to believe that God is going to do something great in the needs of your life, or in the needs of others. We serve a great, big. Awesome God. See, we're beginning what's called the Passion Week this week. You can, I'm sure you can find many celebrations from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. As we go about this week, I want you to think. And, and I want you to pull your paper out and begin and, and look over what happened on Monday, what happened on Tuesday, what happened today. You know, look through the Gospels and see and, and, and kind of get the time frame of what exactly is going on. If you want those papers that we're talking about, uh, we we have them available. Dear, did you bring them? Do you have any extras? If there's anybody in here that has not received that and you want to receive that, because it, it, I'm telling you, really, it really brings it into, um, uh, it really brings it to light exactly what Jesus was, what was going on the Passion Week, the week of Jesus' Passion, all the way through to when He was raised from the dead on Sunday. If you want that, let us know. We'll have it for you. Uh, we can get it to you tonight. Um, or we can, we, or we can get you know get it to you as quick as we can. Or we can email it to you. We we can we can do all kinds of things. Um, but uh, if if you want that, let us know so we can get that to you. Because I'm telling you, when you begin to lay it out, when you lay it out and see what happened, because right after uh, anybody know what happened as Jesus entered the Jeru into Jerusalem, what happened? We talked about it Wednesday. Anybody know what what happened as soon as he entered the entered Jerusalem? All the praising happened. He went to the temple, <laughs> threw them all out, overthrew tables, threw them all out. 
Because he said, You have made the house of the Lord into a den of thieves. It should be a house of prayer. So you begin so, so you begin to understand that, that it just it, it, and then it walks you all the way through the Garden of Gethsemane, the trial, the betrayal, the, the, all, all the different things. I mean, it, it really plays it all out. And, and Friday, we call it Good Friday because he gave his life up on Friday. But between the hours of 12 and 3, I used to work for a bookstore, Christian Light Bookstore in, in Pennsylvania. And we, if we worked on Friday, they shut the store down. From 12 to 3 on Friday, Good Friday. To commemorate what happened. Everybody understands, from 12 to 3, Jesus died. Gave up, his, gave up the ghost. Gave His life. That's when He died. And it says in Scripture that darkness as nightfall fell across the land of Israel. Was it a whole earth thing? I don't really know. I've not, not really looked into that. But we know that at that time in Israel, darkness fell as if it was nighttime. So as we go this week, don't let this be just another time when we get to take kids to Easter egg hunts and get all kinds of candy and, 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 and all that. Don't let this be just that time. Let this also be when you remember what Jesus really went through during this week. Because it will put a whole new perspective on what Jesus did. Because that we, we, we can't forget, just like at Christmas, we can't take Christ out of Christmas, right? We need to keep Him in Christmas because without Christmas we wouldn't have the resurrection day, right? You need Jesus at the beginning because you need Jesus at the end, right? <laughs> We need Jesus at the beginning of our day. We need Jesus at the end of the day. We need Jesus at the beginning of our life. And at the, see what I'm saying? So let's just focus on Jesus this week and what He went through for you. He did that for all of us. Because as Jesus told Nicodemus, for God so loved the world, that's you and me, that He gave His only begotten, His one and only Son. That it doesn't matter who you are. If you believe on Him, you will receive eternal life. Take this week and be in awe once again of what Jesus did. Because it's so magnificent. Okay? I know it seems kind of Seems kind of crazy that, 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 that we would stop. Remember, we have prayer on Tuesday from 5.30 to 7 if you can make it. And then we have Wednesday at 6.30. And then we have our Friday meal. Maybe our Friday meal will take on a whole different meaning as we hand those meals out to people that need it. Because they not only need food, but they need Jesus. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Please invite people. Please invite people. Again, you know, it, 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 going off of what Jonathan Hill said, you know, it, it only takes, you never know when the, when the last encounter, it takes an average of 30 times of them hearing the gospel message before they give their life to Jesus. And, and it, it, it's in the high 90s, 90% and greater of people don't go to church because nobody asks them. So why don't you ask somebody? Somebody that doesn't go to church. Somebody that is outside the realm of, of, of who you think would come to church. Why don't you invite them next Sunday? I want everybody to concentrate on that. How many, how many will say, I will invite somebody to church next Sunday? Oh, come on. How many said, come on, let's, let's do it, come on. Let me see all the hands because you're, you're going to be like, oh no, he's going to get some trouble. We all, that's what we, and, and because if you're going to be able to get somebody to go to church on, on, on a Sunday, it's going to be Easter Sunday, right? So invite somebody to come out next week. Uh, we'll, we'll try not to scare them off, but you know what? It's Resurrection Day. Then who knows what's going to happen, alright? So invite somebody to come out to church next Sunday. And, te- and, 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 and make sure we're telling everyone about the goodness of God as we live our lives, okay? Good? Everybody agree? Can I, can, can I get a second? 
All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Dad, will you dismiss us in prayer? Dismiss in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the birth.